I want to start with a team we've talked about. We talked about a few weeks ago. We've talked about a few times who would be in the play-in game if the season ended today, but I still think has about as bright a future as anybody in the league, all things considered, and that's the Thunder. Yeah. Um, and I'm. You seem like a big Thunder guy. I just it's 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 impossible to deny it at this point. Yeah. You have a superstar in Shea. You have a arguably a potential superstar in Jalen Williams. You have Josh Giddy, who I think is 20 years old right now, and we don't know how good he's going to be, but he's having a great season this year. They're 10th in net rating at the moment. We're not even, we haven't even talked about Chet. And then all the picks. They have two first-round picks this summer, three next, and then just keeps going through 2029. And, and so it's like when you look at these, when you look at the way that this team is currently being constructed, they're not missing on a lot of these picks. And so it feels like they're almost going to get into a situation where they're going to almost have too many good players. But just in terms of bright future, I think that everybody would agree that this team is probably overachieved this year. Their oldest starter is 24. They're the youngest team in the league. Um, and so I, just, I, can't, I can't think of a team with a brighter future that's not a finals contender right now than the Thunder. I would agree with that. Um, should also mention Jay Will, Jalen Williams from Arkansas. Not just J Dub, Jalen Williams from Santa Clara. Apparently, there's a player in the NCAA tournament named Jalen Williams, and it's we'd all be get, disappointed if it's gonna Thunder get, don't draft him it's this gonna year. Get confusing. <laughs> um, Jalen Williams for me was one of my guys that I wanted to talk about. <clears throat> 21 years old. I saw something on Twitter the other day, and again, I'm deep in the interwebs of uh, NBA Twitter, but somebody was like, "Oh." Anthony Anthony Edwards is still younger than him or something like it's it's whatever it's it sort of brings me back to the Mikel Bridges comment about like dude I'm gonna get better and we've seen Jalen Williams get better throughout the season over his last 16 games 18.9 points 5.9 rebounds 4.4 assists 2.2 steals 55 percent from the field 44.7 from three you use the word superstar and I'll I'll without hyperbole or overhyping him he has a chance to be a a star in this league there's no question about that and it comes down to his ability to to make threes and what we've already seen defensively from him he I I did a summer league game I've called uh, an Oklahoma City game in person the thing that strikes you about Jalen Williams is his size his frame uh, his length, the size of his hands, like he's just a a big human being who has dribbling skills and shooting skills and can attack the basket and can guard. Um, I would argue, I'm not saying I would vote for him because I, again, I do not have a vote, but I would argue that he's making a late push and a worthy push for rookie of the year. If you just look, at, and again, I want to talk about roles in a second, but if you just look at the advanced stats for Jalen Williams versus Paulo Bancaro, Jalen outshines him in nearly every advanced stat, whether it's true shooting percentage, uh, offensive win shares, where Paulo is a negative offensive win share on basketball reference, uh, defensive win shares, of course, win shares per 48. Um, like you could make a strong ar- argument that Jalen Williams has had a better rookie season than Paulo Bancaro. Counting stats aside, but that's where we get into role. And Paulo Bencaro has been asked to be a primary shot creator on the Orlando Magic. And like all young players, uh, he has struggled at times with efficiency. His three-point shooting was god-awful in February. One of 33, I think, for the month. Um, and so I, I don't, I'm not saying I would vote for Jalen Williams if I had a vote, but I think it's this race where it felt like Bancaro for months and months and months was the runaway favorite on this. Um, Jalen Williams is definitely in the conversation along with Bancaro for Rookie of the Year. To me, this Thunder team, we don't know about Chet. So I've been so impressed with their defense, and that's without having Chet Holmgren in the lineup. Uh, Jalen has been a big part of that. Jalen Williams as well, who is a charge-taking machine. Um, the Arkansas Jalen Williams. To me, so much of this team's ceiling rests on a simple thing. Can Josh Giddy shoot 35% from three? Now, he's 34% over his last 18 on, on well, I think, two and a half or three, three, three attempts a game. 
But for me, if if Shea's not going to become a high volume forty percent three point shooter, and your shooting is essentially with Isaiah Joe, then Josh Giddy has got to be the guy because Shea's going to have the ball in his hand so much. Josh Giddy has got to be the guy that eventually becomes a thirty five percent, thirty six percent plus three point shooter. Um, again, we're just going to keep running into these math problems, no matter how good you are at driving, uh, and getting to the free throw. Like you need to be able to make threes in an efficient clip in, in the modern NBA. I was looking back at the, at the Clippers trade at the Paul George trade from 2019. It was, it was PG for Gallinari SGA first round pick, which turned into Trey man first round pick, which turned into Jalen Williams, a Miami first round pick, which they're going to have next year two future Clipper first-round picks, and then two pick swaps at 23 and 25. Yeah, Sam Presti knows what he's doing. There's a world that this that turns into the best trade of all time. We could, I, look, we've rehashed it, and we've talked about it. We even talked about it with Kevin last year, the, the James Harden trade. Do I think Sam Presti pulled the trigger a year too soon? Yes, I do. I would have run it back, had James Harden play out his free, restricted free agency year. You just made the finals. Um Maybe you missed an opportunity to win a champ. I don't know. But outside of that, Sam Presti is batting, I don't know, 850. I mean, he's got, he's got, every GM misses on a pick here and there, but his uh, maneuvering, his uh, ability to adjust on the fly, even the year they brought in CP and they ended up with a, a top five seed in the West, that team was awesome. Um, had Schroeder that year, of course, as well with Shea. Like, he, his ability to adjust in the moment, but then also build for the future. Like this team to me is setting themselves up for a sustainable run of eight to 10 years. And there's not many organizations you could talk about that have that sort of blueprint right now. Yep. If you want to watch the rest of the episode, Check out The Old Man of the Three Things, available exclusively on Amazon Music.